Hello and welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're going to do the Kawandi with a sewing machine. It'll be a little easier and it'll go a little faster but we're going to shoot this over a few days so that I can get this all done. Now what we're going to need is crumbs. Lots and lots of fun crumbs just to get everything going and uh, you're going to have to pick a fun backing and whatever your backing is, like this one is what a yard by 42 I guess, a yard by 42. So what I've done is I've cut off the selvage and I've put a, a clean press along the edge already. So we've got that already done and then you need some flannel for the center because I'm going to make a very lightweight summer quilt that's just a lap quilt with my Kawandi. So come on in, let's get started with this hand or this machine sewn Kawandi. Okay, we're going to start in the corner here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip this, this piece has been ironed and folded this way. Now they always say take your biggest piece and put it in the corner first. And that makes a lot of sense once you get sewing because you have lots of other stuff going on <laughs> with this when you're sewing it by hand. It, it's nice having a big piece in the corner you don't have to worry about for a while. So I'm just going to slip it in there so it makes a nice tight joint, right? So you've got it, it this way, right? You got it this way. And you got it this way. So I'm going to, because we're sewing down this way, I'm going to pin it this way here. Just because it won't flop around as much if it's pinned. So when we're going to start on this, I'm just going to slide this up. Now I want to get this right on the edge. Basically you're top stitching along here. Right? So I've got a leader ender on the end. And I'm just going to go back with a couple stitches. Okay, and just kind of go nice and slow. And all I'm going to do for now is add in pieces. So I'm going to take this off. Now, if your pieces are too small, sew them together. Sew them together. Just sew them together. Just put a put a seam down to them, make them the same size. Press open. Press open, press open, just like this, just with your fingers, okay? And now this will be a piece that you can you can work with, right? Um, so let's get another piece here. Now we want to put a, uh, I think I saw, uh, did I iron all these wrong? Yes, I did, okay. So here's where you can use your boutiques, right? So your batiks end up being kind of hard to work with when you're doing a when you're doing a hand sewing project because you can't it's hard to hand sew through them, right? So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna put a little finger press in, and I'm just going to lay this ironed edge just down, right down on top of where I was. And Oh, I need a little bit closer. There we go. Now I want. Now I'm just going to continue doing the adding too for a bit. Now I'm going to get some eclectic stuff going. Now I've got a couple of these. I've got quite. A, I've got a box full of this stuff that's kind of ironed together. I'm just going to get this. There we go. And you see, I'm going to put a bunch of uh, big stuff along the edge. Now, when you've got a piece like this, now I've sewn these stuff, this stuff together. You get a great big piece like that. Just cut it off. Don't, don't put that in because all you're doing now is adding bulk. And I've sewn and I've pressed them wrong. When you're doing this, as you're doing this, you'll quickly learn how to press them. And remember, you can always finger press. And I'm not worrying now about putting in batiks at all because I am using a sewing machine and it's much faster and it's much quicker. So now I'm going to try and get this under, but if I miss it, I'm not going to worry about it. 
there. And I'm just going to... The other one slipped in so nice. Okay. I'm just going to hold that down. If I had an awl, I, a sewing awl, that would be, or a stiletto, I guess is what they're called. There. There we go. And I'm just going to keep adding this while we're going along here. Now, these two colors are pretty, are exactly the same batik, but they're not touching, so it's all good. Oh, I'm get that off the edge so I don't add bulk. And I'm just going to finger press it. There. Just like that. Now I'm going to try and slip this under. I'm going to get this up. Where did this go? I'm going to get this up. And I'm going to slip this under just because it's right on the edge. Right? And now I'm going to just fold it right there. Here. Now I'm going to keep going doing this while uh, for until I get near the corner, the other corner, and then I'll show you what I do there. Okay, you can see here now I'm at the corner. So what I've done is I've taken a larger piece of scrap fabric and I made it fit. So the first thing I did was I made it fit here, up here, and then at the corner, right? And then I pin basted it in place so it doesn't shift. Now with this here, I'll just take this quickly undo it just so you can see how I did this corner. Now what I did is this up here is just laying in place just under on top of the bottom fabric but just under this black fabric here right so that's what's going to hold this part of the kawandi there i'm just going to pin that back in place and then this part here gets folded under right so it just kind of tucks under the fabric just tucks under to get that really sharp lovely corner and I'm going to put it here, put a pin back in there. And then I pin basted this in place here because I don't want this shifting. I want to have a nice clean line to work with. So I'm putting a pin in here so it doesn't move. So basically now I'm just going to continue on my merry way here. I'm just going to pull this out of the way a bit. Now, as you're coming up, sometimes what it'll do is pucker up and bunch up like that. Just lift your foot. And put it down and let it move under. You can take your pin out so you don't run over your pin. And you want to just make sure that it's all nice, plays all nice and neat. Everything is good. Now, as you get up to that corner, you might want to change to a hand crank because you don't want to go off the corner. You want to go right up to the corner. One more. Oh, there we go. And uh, now, with the needle down, you pivot. Just like so. And there we go. And then you're on your way again. Now you get to about here, right? And you've got a nice, neat, sharp, pressed seam, you know, like your fold here on your backing. And I've got a bunch here ironed and ready to go. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pin out and I'm going to t lay something long that's going to cover my piece with a nice edge, but I'm also going to have it extend over to the black. As I make my rounds, I'm going to make then decisions on whether this gets turned, how this gets turned under and everything else. So I'm just going to hold this in place while I'm sewing. And then, okay, now I see it puckered again. Lift your foot. Don't be lazy about it because it will leave a much better, you'll have a much nicer product. And that's it. So I will come back when we're at the other end, or we're back at this side here, the last corner, and I'll show you how to match them all, how to piece them all together once I'm all the way around. 
Okay, as you can see, I've pinned, we're at the this starting corner now, right? So I've pinned like where I was coming up to this. So I've overlapped these edges, this, you know, I've turned under an edge, like quarter of an inch, and I've overlapped it about a quarter of an inch. But when it comes to this piece here, this piece is a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch. And remember, this is about making stuff fit. It's not about, you know, oh, it's too long or oh, it's too short. If it's too short, just add another piece, right? But if it's too long, just make this piece, just make this fit and make it work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew all the way to the bottom, or all the way to the bottom, and removing my pins as I go. And there. When I'm watching, I'm being very careful about that pucker issue, that puckering issue, because this is your first roll. There's always going to be a little bit of, of uh, things going on, and I'm just going to let that slide under. I'd probably be better if I got my... Uh, spleto, but I don't have one handy here. And I just want to make sure that gets in there. Just use a pen, make sure it's there. And I dropped a pen. I'll find it later with my feet. It'll be fine. Okay, here we go. Yeah. come together. Now once I get to this corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off the machine, give everything a real good press, and I might go around in this again with um, a feather stitch or something just along the edge, and then I'm going to start laying in my flannel. And I'm not going to do the entire piece because it'll get too heavy very quickly. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time, and there we are. So there's our first round. So. Yeah, let me find my let me find my uh, scissor because so there we are that's how it's done and I'll come back when we start adding pieces onto the second row because it's pretty much exactly the way you saw it in the hand piecing right so I'll be back probably tomorrow or whenever but okay okay I want to show you how I'm going to add this piece here now I'm just going to finger press this on the machine up, right, because I want a nice, I don't want to have a raw edge, and I'm going to finger piece this part here. Now you do, after a while, get um, an idea and a rhythm as to what you're finger pressing in. So here is where my joint is, so I'm just going to tuck it in and fold it down. There, like this, and I'm going to find my foot pedal, and if I find, this is sec here, this is starting to come into a line, a really long line there. So what I want to do is I want to move it up to break the line up, right? So just so I get a little different line, I'm going to grab my uh, corsage pin because I can't find my stiletto, and I'm just going to back over that back and forth over it very quick and I'm going to run down here now I have a choice I can put a color in or a blue I think there's a lot of blue in that area so I'm just going to add a black piece here and just finger press this part and finger press this and oh there we go get it like this just a bit there and now I'm going to push it in under like this all right just like that right you can see what I'm doing right and I'm just gonna keep going ahead now there now I don't quite meet this piece here so I have a couple of options I can you know pretend it meets and and work with it or I can other, add another piece of color in. Now, what I did, because some of my crumbs were really small, is I sewed them together, basically, and then pressed them open. So what I'm going to do, just to break up this line here, I'm going to go like this, and then go like this, and I'm just going to put it down, 
And it doesn't matter that this is big enough, right? That this is big enough to go, you know, all by itself. It doesn't matter. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get this started. And I'm going to press this under. Right? Just like so. Just like so. So it's it looks like it's all one. And now... When I get to this point here, I can just slip another block underneath it, right? So I'm just going to continue here to the corner, and I'll be back. Now, you see I've got lots lots here that I haven't done yet. So when I get back, I'll show you how to finish the middle. Okay, we're at the last bit. So what I'm going to do, I've got a, it's about an inch wide and about, you know, 18 inches long left. So I'm just going to pivot here just to to get you guys to see this when you're doing this to the middle it's about making it fit and making it work so let me find my foot pedal under the floor and the arm goes off of course it does so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sew down and I've got all the pins kind of to pin based in place and I'm just going to this the, you fold it over and you make it work and you're looking for pieces now that are small enough to fit and you go over your needle slowly breaking a needle now would be bad but yeah so I'm just and I'm using this in the inner part of the foot to to go in the last sew line it helps keep that you know it's a tiny it's a skinny quarter inch but it does work and some of this has been bridged right across so, and basically I cheated a little, and I'm going to admit this to you, I did use, I did make some of them crumb quilts into little crumb, like into little crumb pieces like this, because I was losing, you know, a healthier quarter inch than what I could sew. So I figured, okay, we will just do it this way. And one more, here we go. Now... <clears throat> Okay, and you just, you know, like I say, you just keep running it around until you run out of places to sew. And you kind of, you're trying to make it fit and make it work. There, here we go. I'm going to take that out and I'm just going to, this I found, um, if you sew with a stiletto, this actually went easier. There. Uh, you're holding little tiny bits very close to the uh, you're holding little bits close to the needle so there we go and I want that little bit tucked in and it's not tucking why is it not tucking in there it is I'll make it tuck in. There. And I'm just going to put my needle down and pull those little yellow pins. Because I think I might be able to... You can kind of steer your work too, right? Because remember, it's like the hand stitching one where you're making the stitches to fit the fabric that you're working with. Mm. And I have a bad habit now of putting pins in my mouth where I shouldn't. There we go. And now we're in the home stretch. this or not this actually lies flat which is going to be very bizarre because I didn't think it would lie flat oops I need my little 
longer. It's a corsage. I'm using basically a corsage pin as a stiletto. There. We're done. We're at the ta-da moment. And just like that, we're done. So here's our ta-da moment. Now, this turned out really, really well. Like it was, there is no beginning, there's no end. It doesn't fall together like a crumb quilt with little crumb blocks because it's all over the place. I did save my bigger pieces for the corners. So... You know the bigger the bigger chunks leave them for your corners and that's what it looks like and on the back I just had gotten some really cute quilt fabric that I decided well it's big enough now one of the things that really surprised me as I was going around and around with my sewing machine I thought the hand stitch one when I was doing it it started to bowl in the middle this did not which I was quite surprised at, and is lying absolutely flat. So I'm wondering what it's going to look like once it's been washed a couple of times, but I'm quite impressed with all of this, and I did make a big dent in my crumbs. So I hope you try this. If you're not into hand stitching, this is fine too. This, by the way, my crumbs that were batik, I used here. Because you don't have to worry about using batik crumbs in uh, a sewing machine. Um, if you're hand stitching, batik is really, really hard to hand stitch through. And I would suggest that you use silk thread and a number nine needle, sharp needle. And a number nine, I don't do hand stitching with the batiks because I can't see the number nine eye of the needle. I can't see it anymore, so it's like poking blindly, you know, so... But anyways, I hope you give it a try. It worked out really well in the middle. I was really, really surprised. So you have a fabulous, marvelous week ahead. Okay, bye. Ha take care. Thank you for watching our video today. We are just overjoyed with how our channel has grown. And um, we would like you to share, like, and subscribe these videos with your friends and other, other people. Uh, this is one of the quilts that we might are considering at, at this time to do a sew along for. It is um, a crazy original scrappy design that was made with too much co coffee and too many granola bars and it's a lot of fun to do and it, it is a really good scrap buster. So share, like, subscribe, tell your friends about us. Uh, our plan for 2022 is two different sew-alongs for sure and two different case studies and we're going to do uh, try and do a thing on uh, grouping on uh, strings and crumbs and then another one on curves. So we've got rather an ambitious 2022 planned for you here. So like I say, I hope you come back, have a great week ahead and we'll talk to you later. Bye!